Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. Imagine my excitement when I opened up the Sweet Sunflowers Paper Pumpkin Kit. I saw these stamps and I was like, wow, these are so cool, especially this giant sunflower. I immediately wanted to just cut it out with my scan and cut, and I'm going to show you the result of that. So in today's Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you are going to learn how to cut out stamped images. We're going to stamp one onto a piece of basic white and we're going to cut it out directly. I'm going to stamp it manually, meaning I'm going to use a stamping block, ink, dark ink, stamp it on there, teach you about a little trick I call the pencil trick, and show you how to cut out one stamped image. Then, after that, when you understand the concept of direct cut, especially if you're new to the scan and cut, I'm going to teach you a trick that will blow you away with something the scan and cut can do, and that is called scan to cut data. So let's just get right into it. Scan to cut data. Let me give you a little sneak peek of what that's about. In one fell swoop, you get all this. That's what scan to cut data is. You get all these shapes. It's amazing. It's incredible. What are you going to do with these shapes? I'll teach you another tip and trick with the Stamparatus, what you can do with these shapes. Or if you have a stamping block and you don't have all the equipment I'm showing you, that's fine too. All right, let's just jump right into it. This kit is amazing. And I'm going to show you a project, a finished project I created with this kit. And I'll just, I'll just start out by saying that this kit came with so many goodies, so many freebies. I mean, not only do we have celebration going on, I mean, August is a month to celebrate. Celebration's going on at the store. We got these freebies that are sticking all over the place when I'm trying to show you. Look, we got these freebies, which are these nice beehive thingies, backgrounds, I guess. See how many there were. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There were eight. And I just started cutting into one to put my sentiment. So there are eight of those. And there was an extra stamping spot. So we always get one stamping spot. This time we got two. So I was excited for many reasons. So let's put down this little piece of silicone. When I stamp, I like to stamp onto a rubber mat. I'm going to give you tips and tricks for coloring the sunflower later, so stick with me. And if there's time, time a lot, allotted, I will give you a sneak peek of something I'm going to be teaching you how to make in my upcoming fall projects course, which will be my 11th course on, Udemy, on the Udemy platform, and it is based on the Scan and Cut and fall projects. I'm going to open up the soft suede. See how easy that was to open up? I'm just going to do that and flip it over. It's not that I want my sunflower to be stamped in soft suede. It's just that by doing it this way, I will be able to use this sunflower that we stamp at the same time. I'm going to be able to use it. I'll, I prefer stamping in crushed curry. However, when you're going to scan something in, you need to have a lot of contrast. So we're going to take this sunflower and I'm going to put it down there and I'm going to mount it onto the stamping block. Okay, like that. I'm just going to push it so that the flat side is up. I'm just going to go ahead and get myself a sticky note. I'm going to tap into the soft suede and I'm going to stamp there. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't, even though I'm going to be making sunflowers in crushed curry later, we wouldn't want to scan it in crushed curry. This is crushed curry. It's just too light of a color. It does, you need to help the scan and cut recognize whatever you're trying to do. It, you need to help it recognize whatever you're trying to scan. I mean, so the problem herein lies and this is going to be whenever you have a stamped image with any little gaps that you have to enclose the image for, in order for the scan and cut to be able to recognize it. So taking a closer look at this, I can see loads of gaps. So you can see a big gap right there. Now, typically what I do with gaps, and I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in. What I typically do is I use a pencil, an actual pencil, and then I erase it later. The reason I erased it later is because the gaps were there for a reason. The artist left the gaps there, and I like to go back to the true image from the artist. But in this case, I need to scan this image in, so I'm going to take my marker and enclose it in, and then I'll just use this sunflower later for a card. But typically, if there's like a sketched image like this, I just fill it in with a pencil and erase it later. If you have any gaps left over, you'll have some fuzziness when we do something later. Okay. 
so that's good. Now I have this one ready for something else that we're going to do later. And I, so I'm going to cut this one directly out. So that, that brings me to my next point. I'm going to zoom back out. So I don't get you guys dizzy. There are two modes in your, when you use your scan and cut, there are two modes. Let's move this over here. Bring the machine closer. You can scan something out and directly cut it. So we'll just, I'm just going to put that on the mat. I'm going to use some of my new nifty tape that I'm loving, post-it tape. One of my crafty friends told me about it here on YouTube. When they kept seeing me mess with washi tape that wasn't sticking very well. This stuff sticks very well, but it doesn't rip your paper. So anyway, it's really nice tape. Let's go back to what I was talking about. So I'm going to, when I turn on the scan and cut, you're going to see what I'm talking about. You have scan, direct cut, and scan to cut data. So we're going to use direct cut because we're going to directly cut out this image. So I'm going to go ahead and teach you about both of those in this tutorial. My tutorials are pretty long and intense, so I hope you are long, are ready to go for a ride with me because I guarantee you, you'll, you'll learn something that you haven't done before in this tips and tricks tutorial because this is, this is a lot of stuff that you can do with this. All right, so we are going to, you're going to see pattern and scan, right? And you're going to select scan. So you turn on your machine and you're going to select scan. doesn't matter what machine you have. Don't worry, I have STX-125. It doesn't matter if you have an STX. If you have a CM, scan and cut, right? Just STX-125 is what I'm using. Later there'll be some extra things I can do with this machine that you can't do with a CM. But for now, everything I'm showing you can be done on any model of scan and cut. But it has to say scan and cut, not design and cut. It has to be able to scan and cut. Anyway, so we're going to select scan. And then here are the two modes. You can either do direct cut or scan to cut data. So I will compare both of these. First we're going to do, and with this sunflower, we're going to do a direct cut. And then it's asking, where do you want to temporarily store the data? So we're going to say, okay, well, let's just put it on our machine for now. If your machine's registered to the internet using Wi-Fi, you can put it on your network. But let's just say, store it on your machine temporarily. This is asking you, what's your scan area? 12 by 6 or 12 by 12? I'm going to go with 12 by 6 because I only have one sunflower. And it saves me a lot of time by doing 12 by 6. But you can change it to 12 by 12. Recognition mode, it doesn't matter that this is colored a little bit. It's a little bit of colored. I mean, it's just soft suede color. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to use black and white recognition mode because there's a lot of contrast between the image and the background. Hardly ever use color recognition mode. But let's go ahead and hit start and see what happens. It's going to scan in my stamped image. Recognize it. And that's what it's doing. It's recognizing it as a shape. So there it is. It appears there. We're going to say OK. Now, not only did it recognize my stamped image, but it recognized my very dirty mat. So we want to get rid of the extra bits we don't want to scan in. So what we need to do is you're going to go, you can get rid of them by ignoring object size because there's lots of little stray stray marks, right? You, so you can ignore some objects. I'll show you that. So we could say, okay, ignore all the things that are less than an inch, you could say. That would help you get, that's an inch, for example. That would help you get rid of a lot of extra bits in the back. That's one way. But a, an easier way is to scan or to select. I'm using my little stylus. And it's easier just to select the sunflower. And then it will get rid of all that extra stuff in the background that you don't want. Let's preview that and see what we have. Looks good to me. And it looks like a solid object. So that's great. And so now what I like to do typically is put a little outline distance around it of the 0 0.04 inches because that's the minimum outline distance you can add around a stamped image. It's typically what a die cut would do when you use a metal die. And I'm going to show you what that would look like in reality. So we have stamped image. Here's one, here's one like that I stamped in soft suede. And that's that little 0 0.04 outline distance around the outside of the stamped image. So we're going to click OK. And we're going to click OK. And now it's going to cut. And I'm leaving the settings at their defaults. 
It's gonna, it says it'll take a minute, but it doesn't really take a minute. I'm gonna click start. I just wanna show you that I'm leaving it as de at its default. It's going to touch the top of the mat and determine how thick the mat is, and then it's gonna compare that to how thick the paper is. This is what's called auto blade technology. So it, if you have a lot of scratches at the top of your mat, it's the mat trying, it's the blade trying to determine how thick your paper is. And it needs to do that by comparing it to something that's known. And then if you have a scan and cut CM model, you would have to set your blade depth. In which case, you could set your blade depth manually and you would use for this paper that I'm using, I'm, I'm using the, this is called Basic White Cardstock by Stampin' Up. It's not the one that's thick Basic White that you use for cards. It's the one you use for layering. So it's regular basic white. And I use a blade depth of four. So if you're using a scan and cut two, use a blade depth of four. But not for this SDX machine because we don't set blade depths because there are no numbers. It's all done with auto blade. You can't set the blade even if you wanted to. There's no numbers. All right, so there you go. Let's see what happened. How cool is this? Dun 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 dun. I'm so excited. Every time I cut out a stamped image, I get excited. So there we go. Let's, you can either get it off with your little spatula or you can bend the mat a little bit and then it pops right off. And we have a beautiful sunflower. Let's put it on here for contrast. Okay, there we, there we have it. And I'll show you coloring techniques a little bit later because I really wanna do the meat of the lesson. So that's great, okay? So you might be wondering, paper chef, that's great, we cut out a stamped image. Could I stamp a whole page of those and do that? Okay, it's even better than that. Could I stamp a whole page and cut them out? Okay, yes you could. We've done that many times on this channel. You could sit and, and stamp a whole page of these and cut them out. However, there's a better way when, say we are going to be coloring these in different ways later. Like, if you were gonna stamp a whole page of these, let me, let me kind of compare this to the hippos. So when I want to cut out the hippos, I typically would, you know, stamp a few different hippos and cut them all out. There's a bunch of little different hippos. In this case, though, they're, they're all going to be the same. So really, I just need to scan this in and get the shape of it. Okay? So why? Because I'm not really going to be cutting these out individually because this isn't even the color that I'm going to be making these. So is, wouldn't it be better if in one pass... We could just go in here, scan this in, scan the shape of a flower in, okay, like this, and then make multiples of it. And in one sheet of paper, you can get 17 of these. That's how many fit, 17, and I, that's even with an outline distance. You'll get 17 of these with one 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. Then you can just, you know, cut and cut them all out, use your stamparatus or your stamp and stamp and get them all done really quickly. All right, so you may be wondering, well, why don't we just multiply, why don't we just take the one you just scanned in? We use direct cut. So why not, Paper Chef, why don't we just start making more of these? Why don't we do that? We can't do that. We can't make any more of these. We can't move this. We can't do anything to it because we, at the very beginning of this tutorial, I told you what we were using. We were using something called, let me delete that. Don't worry that you delete it. We were using something called direct cut. When you directly cut, you can't copy it later, you can't multiply it later, you can't make, you can't do anything to it. You can't resize it, you can't, you can't do anything to it. It's just directly cutting out the shape. Well, if you wanna do something to it and use the shape and make multiples of this blank shape, then you're gonna to have to use this second option, scan to cut data. So let's do scan to cut data, and we're gonna do the same thing as we did before, 12 by six, and we're gonna click start. I've already stamped these for you. These are stamped in soft suede, and I've already used the marker, like the same marker trick, which would be what my pencil trick, which is how to enclose those gaps. So that's what we're doing. We're recognizing it. And I have two of those there, just in case one doesn't recognize the same way. They both recognized beautifully earlier, but we just need really just one of these for the trick I'm gonna be teaching you. Oh, I see a lot of you have come on, and I'm gonna be saying hi in just a moment but I like to get the bulk of the lesson done first and concentrate. But I see Debbie is watching from a hospital bed. Now that is dedication. I hope you're okay, Debbie. All right, we're going to go right here and 
look at these options. So we have, it's these sunflowers scanned in, and when you use scan to cut data, you have a few options. You could scan in just the outline of the image, which is all I want for what I'm doing, just the outline, so I don't have to fuzzy cut them all, the, all day long. You could do the inside and outside of the image, but you'd have a big hot mess because there's so many lines, it would cut like all the inside and the outside, and you'd have a bunch of little, um, a bunch of little lines. And then you could just do this lines only, not just the inside and outside, but just the lines. Another hot mess. Let's just use the first option when we use scan to cut data. I mostly use the first option, which is just scanning the outer lines. So again, we have all of the extra parts that got scanned in in the background, so we don't need all that. We only need one sunflower for what I'm going to show you, so let's just go ahead and select out. I'm just, I'll just pick the first one. Okay, select out everything else, right? But you can also ignore object size, right? Either way, ignore object size. We'll get rid of any extra small bits. I mean, we probably don't need to. I think I got the good, a good selection there. Now, this is the part about scan to cut data that's tricky is you have to save it before you can do anything to it. And we're going to click OK. And if you, sometimes it's a delayed reaction. You need to tell it where to save. Like before we had temporarily told it somewhere to save. This time it's really asking you where do you want to save, meaning this is going to stay there. If you save it to the wireless network, it's going to go into your canvasworkspace.brother.com, the online version of Canvas Workspace, not the one that's installed on your computer that I always teach you to use in my courses, but the web-based version. That's where it goes, and I've done tutorials on that. You can also save it to a USB stick, but we're going to instead save it to this machine. We're saving it right here to the machine, this sunflower. At this point, everything I'm showing you can still be done with a CM model. It's telling me that it was saved in my memory of this machine. Click OK. So that's it. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to click Home, delete all patterns, and you're like, oh no, where'd it go? It's in the memory of the machine. Just one sunflower is. So let's retrieve that sunflower and do something to it. We're going to click Retrieve Data, and we're going to retrieve it from where we saved it on the machine. And now we're going to go to the very bottom. You can, and that's where the sunflower is saved right there. So now you can do things to it that you can't do with direct cut. Namely, you can click OK and you can select it and move it around. You can't do that in direct cut. You can edit and make multiples. You can do object edit and create multiples of this using the plus sign. However, we don't want to create multiples just yet. I want to teach you another tip and trick. So, I just wanted to show you that when you use scan to cut data, you now have data. This is a shape. You now have data. And you can now have this. We're going to make just blank shapes. We're going to be stamping onto the shapes. We're not saving the actual line art or anything because that's, that's actually uh, stamping up artwork. We're just saving the shape and we're going to use the stamp that we own, right, to stamp onto the blank shape. I hope that makes sense. And you would never really want to stamp like line art anyway because the whole point of stamping is the, the technique and the way that you get the colors and shading and all that stuff going on. All right, now, here's something that you can do now just with the STX-125 that you can't do with the CM model. So you can do, you can, in the CM model, you can make multiples of this, but when you're using scan to cut data and you make multiples of it, you're only gonna get the, the stamped image itself, right? You're not, you're gonna get exactly the stamped image, like what I just stamped nothing around the outside of it, right, in a CM model. But in this model, because we're using the SDX125, we have this thing called the offset line. This offset line is something that you can all use in your software regardless of which machine you have. You can make offset lines in your software. What I love about this offset line is that you can make an extra shape that's bigger than the original shape. I'm going to go with the 0.4 outline distance like I did earlier. So we get that little bit of little bit of edge, right? The little bit of white edge around the image. Now here's the tricky part, not tricky part, but you have to remember that when you create an offset line, it goes right on top of your original shape. So let's click OK. And if you're if you don't if you just were to cut that right now, all you would be cutting out is that little tiny outline because there's two overlapping shapes right now. Okay? There they are. 
So what we want to do is move them away from each other and get rid of this, the one that has a lot of detail. Why do we want to get rid of the one with a lot of detail? That's the actual stamped image itself, that one. We want the one that has less detail because that's the shape that we're going to be stamping our image into. Hope it's making sense so far. I'm going to check in with you guys. I'm going to delete that. So now we are left with that blob of a shape okay, that we're going to make multiples of. So let me start saying hello. And then I'm going to talk about how to multiply this shape and make more of them and how to use what's called auto layout. So I hope you're not blown away too many features already. But if you are, if you're trying to delve really deep into SDX 125, I have an entire course just on this model of machine. And then my other courses are always based on different models, but um, this model is pretty much featured in all my courses, except for my first two, which were based on the CM. And my last course I did is mostly based on this model, but mostly software as well. All right, hello, Lisa and Debbie and Melissa from Texas and Sandy and Gloria. Gloria is heading before she heads off to church. Well, bless you for watching. And Debbie is, she's saying I'm a tough old bird, right? She's, she's in the, in the hospital watching this. I'm sorry you have to go through, through that, Debbie. But I'm glad you're having fun crafting anyway, or watching crafting. It'll perk you up. And hello, Sheila. And thank you for all the likes. And if you, if you check in, I can say hi. Now, what I want to do is go to Object Edit. And I know how many are going to fit because I've tested this. But at first, you might have to test it yourself and everything. So I'm going to say 17, I think it was. I, mm, we'll try 17. If not, we have to lower it down. I think it was like 16. There were four rows of four. And then there was one at the end. And so it cut, they cut out like this, right? So we're going to put them all on a all on a big piece of paper. So before I lay them out, I just want to show you what paper I'm using. I'm just using a piece of 12 by 12. Okay, a basic white cardstock. We're going to take this one off now. We've already scanned it in, right? When I didn't cut those out, that was just something to scan. I'm going to use my tape again to help hold my paper down. So now that you know we have 12 by 12 paper, you're going to see something called auto layout. It's how you take, how you get the scan and cut to decide where to put all these pretty little sunflowers or these little shapes. And because the mats are not very sticky and because I've been using my mats a lot, I have a couple mats going and for weeks now, I've been working on the, well actually the entire, for months now, I've been working on a course and I've had different machines going nonstop, cutting out projects for fall. Anyway, so let's do what's called the auto layout. So we have that, we have the 17 blobs or shapes on the screen that we're going to be cutting out. Click OK and you're going to click OK again. So what you're going to do is there's this little feature here called auto layout. It's in all your different models of your scan and cut. CM models, SDX models. It looks like this. It looks like little shapes, a couple of little shapes on a mat. Now the first one lets, lets the computer, which is, this is a computer, just arrange these in any order, in any which way. They might, they might not be right side up or upside down. They might go in any direction. The next one, they're either going to face up or down, up or down. Now, these are all just shapes that don't matter which way they go. And in the last one, they're all going to face up. Well, we don't care about which way these face, so I'm going to choose the first option, which lets the computer decide how to lay these out on the mat in the most efficient way possible. So there are 17. And it looks like we could have even fit a few more. But last time I did 17. Now I'm going to take this, this one, we click OK. And this one, I'm just going to move it off to that corner because I'm going to use it for my template later. You'll see why. So let's go ahead and cut these. The, I'm just going to use the basic pressure, you know, the, the default pressure and all that stuff. We'll click, we're going to click Cut. And we're going to go ahead and cut out all those at once. It's going to take seven minutes and it's not really gonna, we're not really going to do the whole thing. I just want to show you that that's what we would do. So we would cut out a whole page of these. And then I have a template. So let me just, I'm just getting it started to show you. 
I can, I mean, I can show you other things while it's doing it. I'm going to use some of these for what I'm, what I'm, what I'm about to show you. Okay, so this machine's not too, well, actually, I can even wait for the new shapes. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to turn the camera like this and take out what's called the Stamparatus Stamp Positioning, Stamp Positioning Tool. Okay, it is a stamp positioning tool. So let's find, so we're gonna take this tool. And I think you're gonna really like what I'm about to show you here. So let's kind of start from, I already have my template. My other thing's cutting out, so you're gonna have your, you're gonna make your template. Your template is basically just one little shape you just cut out, that's what's called your template. So, let's take, we're starting from scratch here. I have to move this away because my machine's going crazy and I don't want my machine to knock into me. So, let's move my tripod a little bit over here. You might see my socks or whatever. All right, so, actually I can pull this, you know what, just so it stops moving. I don't need this part of my Stamparatus. Stamparatus has a couple hinged plates and I just need one hinged plate. So let's take, let's start from the beginning and Say you have, you know, 100, whatever, 50 shapes, it doesn't really matter. Take a sticky note. Stick a sticky note on your stamparatus like this. Anywhere, it doesn't really matter where you put your sticky note. Okay. I'm going to take my stamp. Okay. Oh, hello from Norway. We got Toro from Norway. That's so cool. You guys watch it from all over the world. Hello, Marie Alexander. Again, I see you on all my videos. Thank you so much. And Lisa, I'm glad you're trying this yourself. Awesome. Mary from Oregon. Zoma from Puerto Rico. Awesome. Okay, so Mandy's here. Esmeralda. All right, let's put this like this. We're going to put this stamp like this. Do you see what I did? I put it, I put it flat side up. Okay, we're gonna like flat side up. We're gonna lower the hinge on here. We're gonna lower this down like so. And we're gonna lift up. Oh, I guess I already had some ink on there. That's okay. Good enough, we'll just do it again. I already had some ink in there and I should wipe the ink off that I had on there because I wanted to use crushed carry now. I don't wanna use um, soft suede anymore. So I'm wiping that down a little. Now I'm gonna get my ink pad and I'm going to ink up with the crush carry. Debbie, I'll talk to you later about all that stuff, right? Okay, so, hello, Kathy, nice to see you. All right, so, crush carry, right? We're gonna tap, tap, tap onto Stamparatus, and we're gonna push down. Okay, good. Doesn't matter that it's kind of faded, don't worry about it, right? What we need is we need our template to go right over the top of this. And so all I was doing there was cutting a little, sh a little shape for me so I know exactly where to tape my template. Okay, so now I'm just trying to find that, you know, where that little, there's one of these, one of these that's bigger than the other. Um, trying to find that one little corner. Sometimes I just have to keep twisting it all around to try to find that one little section. I think I think I'm good. Okay, so it's very important to place your template in the right spot. Okay, this trick that I'm showing you is great for when you're die cutting too with metal dies. I do this with my hippo dies, not just with my scan and cut. It's whenever you die cut out a bunch of shapes that are the same whether you just got the scan and cut to cut out the shapes that are the same for you, right? Like I just did, and that's my template. Or whether, and I'm going to tape this down really good, the template. So whether you got your scan and cut to cut out a bunch of shapes for you that are the same, or whether you die cut them out yourself with a metal die cut. So either way, the idea is you have a bunch of shapes that are the same. Okay, and this is, that's my little trick for lining up my template. And I... I kind of just, I kind of just like kind of made up this trick like after so much frustration of doing it so many other ways 
that I kind of came up with this trick and I just hope you like this trick too. So now you're taking your little shapes of sunflowers, which I probably turned upside down and right side up and who knows. And we're going to line those up in the template. The way I always line them up is this fat little leaf. That's one. It's just the easiest one to line up, I figured. This little notch right there. See that? I'm lining it up right in there. Okay. So that's my template and I line that up. The shape. And I'm kind of at an angle here, but you get the idea, right? You get the idea of what I'm showing you, I hope. I hope you get the idea. So I'm going to go tap, tap, tap. Okay, there's seven minutes are up from the scan and cut. is is done doing its thing. All right, I'm going to move this over. Let me, let me go ahead and unload the mat so that's out of the way. But check this out. Now you have your own, you have all your shapes you just cut out, which I did earlier. So now you're ready to, um, to do what I'm doing. 17 of these at once. All right. So this is so cool. We're going to do it. I'm going to push down. Okay. And it, it sticks to it because that's what it does. It sticks because it's, is that amazing or what? It sticks because it's like um, paper sticks to ink. All right. If that's not cool, I don't know what is. Now look, you just keep doing it. That's not the cool part, right? The cool part was doing one of them. Right? But you're like, oh, I could have used a stamping block for that, right? If you're just going to do one, you're like, I could have used a stamping block. But now you're going to do 17 of them. Well, actually even more than 17 because we just I just did two sheets of them. I'm just going to keep making them over and over. I'm not even going to be able to stop myself. As soon as the video is over, I'm going to keep on making some, keep on stamping some flowers. So as long as you just stamp them all with the same template, so every time you scan to cut data, you might get your sunflower might look a little bit different. That's why it's good to save it to your machine, and I'm going to make sure you know how to save it to your machine. Okay, I'm just doing one more just for good measure because it's so much fun to just keep doing this over and over. Okay, I could do my whole pile this way. And then if you save it to your machine and you cut out some more later, you can just keep doing, you can use your same template again. So there we have it. We have loads of sunflowers. I'm going to show you other ways to color these. I have more tips and tricks for you. But that's the idea of the Stamparatus trick. So I need to go back to the machine and finish up what I was showing you with that and make sure we've saved our template on the machine. Just the, the one that has multiples now as opposed to the one that has... Remember there, were, there was one where we did scan to cut data and we had one sunflower. But now we have multiple sunflowers and I want to make sure you know... Ooh, that's a squeaky thing. I want to make sure you all know that you need to save that template too because that has multiples. All right, so we're done cutting. We have 17 cut, right? This is my pile from earlier, but you just cut 17. You would take them off the mat. Find my little stylus. So here they are. So what you need to do is you can keep on cutting. You can just keep on cutting again and again if you want, right? Select cut again if you want. You keep on doing that over and over, right? But, or, or, let's go back and go back to this menu and you want to hit save. And what you want to do is you want to overwrite. Let's just click on here. We're going to click save and we're going to save it to our machine. We want to overwrite the one that was a single lone sunflower because we want to now have the page of sunflowers saved. Hope that makes sense. Hello, Yvette. You had this kit in your cart but forgot to press go. How did you, this kit, oh no, I hope you missed, didn't miss the kit Paper Pumpkin deadline. It was the 10th of the month. So if you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin now, you're going to get next month's kit. I should have mentioned that earlier. You can't get the kit I'm actually showing you. This, this Paper Pumpkin uh, video here is dedicated to my subscribers who are mostly scan and cut users as well. Anyway, what we did is we saved now all of these. So let's just go like this. We're going to go home. Uh, okay, delete all patterns. What I need to show you just to kind of finish up this part of the tutorial, the technical part, is you come along like tomorrow, whatever, and you're like, I want some more sunflowers, right? I want to cut some more shapes, not sunflowers, just the shapes. We're not actually cutting the sunflowers themselves. We're cutting the shapes, okay? So you come along and you retrieve data and you go to your machine and you go to the bottom of the list and there are all your sunflowers on your template. 
So is that cool or what? So now you can just cut out another whole stack of them and use your stamparatus again to stamp those. All right, so that's good. Now we're done with that whole part of the tutorial. I hope you now understand the difference between direct cut, cutting out one item at a time, versus scan to cut data, where you can cut out. This is direct cut, you cut out the stamped image. Scan to cut data, you're cutting out the shapes over and over again. All right, so let's show you now some coloring techniques that I think will be fun for the sunflower. So you have, I wanted to use this for the detail of the sunflower. I wanted to use the Stamparatus to just get the detail. Let me get my little tray. I know I have a tray somewhere. It's amazing how things disappear. We, all right, so we have a bunch of these pieces that are like that. So what I want to do is show you how to turn those into just sort of more detailed sunflowers with using some crushed curry so, and some soft suede for the middle parts. Now these ones that you, that you originally cut out in soft suede, they're pretty cool too with sunflowers. I think they're pretty cool too. But I just wanted to use mostly crushed curry around the outside. That's what I decided. I don't need those spatulas. So what I'm going to teach you right now is something called the twist technique to get the middle done and how to use your old, so say these get dried out. Now they don't have crushed curry in the Stampin' Blends, but we do have like so saffron and some yellow colors, right? So what I'd like to do with my old ones that are all messed up, I put little tape on them to say this is my messed up one. Look, it's all jacked up. It has like a funky brush at the end, but I don't throw away my old blends. If I either give them to like an old team member who, who wants them, but I tend to just like save them to use them as brushes. So really I'm just using this as a brush right now, this so saffron. And so I'm gonna take my Crush Carry ink over here and I'm just gonna take it and put some, see, I'm just gonna put it on a stamping block. See that? So ink on a stamping block. So then I can do some coloring, right? Just by, I can color in my edges using just this as a brush, okay? And it's a little darker at first, but you get the idea. So I'm just going to go ahead around and do that a few times. This is what I was doing earlier to get some detail around the edges of my sunflowers. There's a little bit of alcohol left in these old markers, even when the brush is all messed up. And you can refill them too. I don't have great luck refilling old markers, but even when the brushes are all messed up, I have a lot of luck using them using them to sort of paint with. Okay, so every sunflower is gonna come out a little bit different, but you get the idea. I'm just adding the detail to the edges. So now, oh, we have one more to do over here. I'm just doing the ones that I've stamped because I have some more to stamp with my Stamparatus. Okay, so that was step one. Step two is I'm gonna do the centers with the soft suede. So I'm just gonna grab a stamping block and I'm gonna get this really cool center and show you the twist technique. So it looks like a little hurricane, right? This really cool center. So let's just do it on a sticky note so you can see it. Open up the soft suede and I'm going to, I see there's a question there, but guys, it's hard for me to see the questions because yeah, you just refill it with regular isopropyl alcohol. You gotta take the nib out. You take this nib out, right? I don't want to pull it out right now because I'm using it. Pull out the nib, dump the alcohol in, and you refill it. But it's hard to get the nib back in. I have to get my husband to use his like needle nose pliers to get the nib back in. Okay, you have a CM model? Um, oh, wow, there's a whole course on, there's two courses. So go ahead and check out my website, thepaperchef.com, and then go to Brother Scan and Cut Courses, Luis, and you'll see there's two courses just on the CM model. Anyway, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just showing you the center of the sunflower. The twist technique is when you, when you twist, right, you're gonna, you're gonna touch and twist. Isn't that cool? So you get that, that blur effect. So I'm gonna do it on my sunflowers. Let me show you. I, what I like to do though is stamp off. So I'm stamping off. I don't want the sunflowers to be too dark in the center. So I'm stamping off, meaning I'm stamping onto the mat and I'm gonna go like that and I'm twisting. Hold your sunflower and twist your stamp. Is that cool? It looks like a little hurricane. It's like all blurry. Love it. 
Okay, tapping into the ink, right? I'm tapping into the soft suede, stamping on there. And you know, if you put your little, if you put your little rubber mat in here, it's easier to do the twist technique because the little paper doesn't slip as much. So let's put that over, I'm gonna put that over there. So tap, 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 and put that over, th just stamp that over there. Here, and then we'll go in here and twist. Yeah, see, it's a lot easier to hold my sunflower still when it's on the rubber part. So again, I'm stamping off. So that's one technique, it's called stamping off. It's when you stamp your color off onto another piece of paper because I don't want the soft suede to be so dark for the centers. Tap, tap, tap. Get in there and twist. So you could see why I like doing multiples. And then I'll be doing a video at some point on the projects I create using this paper pumpkin kit that I just got. So stay tuned for that. And it takes me usually about a week or so after I get it. We'll do the inside of that. All right, so now, finally, I'm gonna finish coloring these. And I have another coloring technique to show you. So we have using your old blends marker that you're gonna refill, that you're gonna use the old jacked up nib. I'm calling it a nib. I don't even know what that thing's called, but I'm calling it a nib. It, it's so jacked up, it won't even go in there. <laughs> so I'm, that, I'm just saving an old so saffron marker. We don't have markers. We don't have ones that are for the uh, crushed curry. They don't make crushed curry blends, but they made other blends that are similar. And I'm just using the nibs. All right, so now we need some ink. We need some more ink, like again, with the crushed curry. We're gonna go like this onto the stamping block. And you can see I got some ink there. And now I'm gonna use a blending brush to finish off these sunflowers. A blending brush, I have different colors for different shades. So like I have, just to kind of give you an idea, like this is my yellow blending brush. I have one for oranges and for pinks and for blues and et cetera. But you could, don't, you could wash them and use the same one. So I'm just gonna get on there, get some ink, tap, 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 and just give it a rub and finish off my sunflowers, the color and shade that I want them. And now we have lots of detail and definition. So because I have the, the darker tips, the lighter insides, and I'm blending my sunflowers. And now they gave us these little shapes in the kit, I did notice, but they weren't the right size of the sunflower. Not that I don't love them and I'm gonna use them, but I wanna show you these that came in the kit. And it's kind of, they had the same idea, these artists, and I say artists, they're artists from Stampin' Up. I'm stuff sticking all over the place. When the concept design artists make things, they come up with, they actually try things, I'm sure they try things, and they come up with these ideas. And I think this here was, is meant for us to stamp onto. It's just not the size of the stamp. See, the ones that came in the kit aren't this actual size. Here, let's put it over there. Of the stamp, they're much smaller. So they think they had the same idea of like, you're gonna stamp extra around them. They had the kind of same idea I'm having here, except my sunflowers are bigger. So when I show you my card, it's gonna be a little bigger than the sample. So I'm just gonna color these in. And I, I guess those are bumblebees. They're really blurry bumblebees, unless I can't see very well. Yeah, they're bumblebees. The little pollinators, so they're gonna be on the flowers. This kit is so nice, whether you're into flowers or not, it's so great because it has like watercolor scenes. I'll, sh I'll give you a sneak peek of the kit. Lots of sneak peeks today. Where those of you that stick around, there's gonna be lots of little gems. We'll open up the rest of the kit. So that's how, that's how to do it. So voila, I'm done showing you that. Let's make sure we color them all. See how they each look different? And now you have a lot of sunflowers that you can use for your projects. So I will show you what I did with the sunflower that I created right out of the box. This is the right out of the box. You just put it right onto your, I mean, this was a two minute card. I stuck some little dimensionals on these little pieces. Uh, where are the little pieces? I'm gonna show you the kit. So these are these little pieces that came in there. I popped, popped one off, stuck some dimensionals on it, cut a little piece of my beehive, not that beehive, one of these beehives, cut a little piece of these, right? 
stuck that behind the thank you, stamp, stamped it in soft suede, and popped up the flower a little bit. But if you think that's gorgeous, look at the back of the card, it's gorgeous too. I'm almost like, don't want that to be the back of the card. I think I should chop these cards up and make two cards for everyone. But it's made with such cool paper, like the watercolor paper. And if you think that's cool, look at these envelopes. Hello, how great are these envelopes? Oh my goodness. They're like works of art. These would make great card backgrounds. There's just gorgeous envelopes, gorgeous cards. So I want to show you the rest of what's in here, which like I said, I just got it. So this is telling you if you, if you subscribe by the 10th of... See what month it is. It's August, so you missed the August if you didn't get it. Like Kathy was saying, she missed the August kit. This is the September kit. So it's going to be something with spooky treats and all. Something Halloween-ish. So it's telling you about, that's like a little sneak peek of the color. And it's going to be treats, they told us. But look at this. Look at this kit. People are already talking about, in the Paper Pumpkin Fan Club, they're already saying it's their favorite kit. It's not my all-time favorite because I have I have like other kinds of all-time favorites, but it's one of mine because it's I love this watercolor. Okay, and then you get these these really cool like mossy meadow backgrounds. That's a few cards that came like that. Put my card over there. You get a few cards that come like this. I can't believe like I don't even know when to use that. I can't believe that's the back of the card. That's too nice to be the back of the card. I want to chop this up and make this into two cards. And then there's these, the, the one I just used to make the card base. So it's, there's enough for nine card bases. We, most of the year we get paper pumpkin kits and they are, they are cards most of the time. And a couple times a year we get treats. There's treats. And around Christmas time we get tags. We get like a double set, cards one month and tags another month. And then once a year maybe we might get home decor. But that's what the paper pumpkin kit looks like. All right, as promised, I, sh I want to show you something from I'm doing in my fall projects course with the Scan and Cut. I used uh, this bless Hello Harvest, and you are such a blessing for the what I'm about to show you. These are tag treats. Those of you that have been following me for a while know that I've been making tag treats for years, and I usually use punches to make tag treats. Recently, Stampin' Up! discontinued their scallop tag topper punch. And I've always been wanting to come up with a way to do it with the scan and cut anyhow. So I came up with this design inside of Canvas Workspace. And I made my own tag treats. And I used some little, uh, what's this? I'm trying to think, Rustic Harvest Designer Series paper. And I stamped right onto it with Cajun Craze with the little acorn trinkets. And there's lots of little treats in these. So I do show you step by step in my course how to make these little, let's see, Hershey Nuggets fit in there, Tic Tacs, Mentos, um, chocolates of, you know, all kinds of stuff fits in there. But I also colored the paper using blending brushes and made lots of these. Let me raise this up a little bit because I have something to show you that's kind of big. Okay. I'll be doing a video of what you're going to be learning to make in the course, but I can show you a couple of the items that are laying on the table right now. So that's the tag treats that we make by, dis by welding shapes together. So we're not actually using an existing tag, we're making it. We're just like welding a couple shapes together to make the tops of these tags, right? And then we're going to make the band, and then I show you how to make the score lines, and the score lines for the bottom, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like I show you how to make these from scratch. Okay. Hello, Sharon. Glad you joined us. And thank you, Andy, for your comment. Kathy, thank you. I know you'll be joining in the course. Hi, Diane. Diane, I think I saw a message in Facebook and I didn't get to it yet. So, okay, how did I add brown to the one on my table? Huh. How did I add brown to the one on my table? This one, I stamped it in, you're talking about this one, right? I stamped it in soft suede in the first place. This was, so go back to the beginning of the video. You can just cut them, you can just stamp them in soft suede. And, but I only, this one here is the same as this one. So what I just showed you is this exact flower. Like this will turn into this if you use the coloring techniques I just showed you. So all you do is stamp in soft suede, right? And then you color it just the way I did. Actually, I do like that when they're next to each other. But I, I think I like these better though. The ones that are just crushed carry. I don't know, which do you like better? 
Soft, I would just, it's either your choice is going to be soft suede or crushed curry. Which one do you like better? So this will turn into that. So I hope I answered your question. Got it. Okay, she said, got it. Good. Good, good, good. All right. Luis from Perth, Australia. All right. So I hope you go to my website, Luis, because there you'll find courses on um, and hundreds of tutorials. You know, you can actually just go on YouTube and find hundreds of tutorials. Anyway, that's where the blessings of harvest was. Now I want to show you the turkey. Hold on, got to get grab the turkey. Mr. Turkey, that's going to be one of the uh, built-in projects that we do. We do some built-in projects using the scan and cut, meaning ones that are part of a uh, canvas workspace. And I have these little monsters. So cute. Hold on. Move my microphone. Okay, I'm grabbing some monsters and I'm grabbing some sunflowers to put my microphone down. Another Mr. Turkey. Mr. Turkey with the hat. I know you can't see these very well, but I, I'll be doing a video where I'm sitting down and holding these up, like, it, like facing the camera. I have what's called explosion boxes too, so if you've been watching my Season of Chic workshop series, then you're, you, you may have seen a sneak peek of the explosion boxes. These are some built-in templates we'll be playing around with that are part of Canvas Workspace, and we'll be doing this in Fall Projects course. And here are some flowers that are built into the machine that I'll be talking about how to create, some with some patterns built into your machine with the SDX model, that is, not every model of machine. But we'll be making some of these, and I curled the edges of these a little bit. And there's so much more. There's explosion boxes, there is giant pumpkin, SVG file, there, it, there are nestable trays, mini coffins. I mean, there's so much in the course. Oh, leaf cards, cards that you weld together shapes to make your own leaf card. Anyway, that's, that should be done by next weekend. And the whole, the whole goal of mine is to get, you, get this course launched before celebration ends because if you like the stuff that you see, you know, celebration's going on right now and it's a great sale where you can earn free things at my Stampin' Up! store. And if you like what you see in the course, I want people to be able to go get some stuff for free because I use some of these free items in my course. So that ends. So I'm trying to launch my course before this promotion ends. So if anybody wants to get some of the paper, like I do use this paper a lot. I hope it's still available by the time I launch, but there's this really cool paper in here. This one. Rings of Love Designer Series paper. So I use that a lot. And then I use Rustic Harvest a lot and Celebrate Everything Designer Series paper a lot and a bunch of other retired fall papers and different kinds of cardstock. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on getting back to, got to go full circle back to why we came here, on how to cut out stamped images using your scan and cut. I hope you learned the difference between direct cut and scan to cut data. I hope you realize the time efficiency, time saving tips of using scan to cut data because then you can make multiples, especially combined with the Stamparatus stamp positioning tool and you can make multiples of your stamped images and then use them to embellish your different projects and you'll have lots of fun. You can, like I can even put these little guys on my new treats that I was just making. They would go perfect on my little tag treats. They, they go perfect on anything. I'll be using these to embellish other cards with. Thank you all for watching. This is the Paper Chef. Have a great day.